tying up a redfish hammerhead today. Uh, recently got back from a redfish trip down Louisiana. And actually last year and this year, I tied up a number of different hammerheads with a little bit different um, makeup and everything for redfish. And this is a pattern that worked really, really well. There's not a whole lot of difference between this and the original hammerhead, other than the eyes up here, the bead chain eyes are a little smaller and the threat, the excuse me, wraps of lead along the hook shank are smaller. Um, because I don't want this to sink like a rock to the bottom, I want this to uh, stay in the water column. But also we experimented with um, some different colors. This is a barred white, which worked real well. It was kind of muddy waters, um, so it worked um, pretty good. Um, and there's other colors that also worked really, really well. Um, a, a combination of chartreuse and purple also produced very, very well. So anyway, this is the redfish version of the hammerhead, and I'll go ahead and get started tying. So we're gonna start this redfish hammerhead by putting our hook in the vise. This is a longer shanked hook. This is a must add 3400, <clears throat> excuse me, must add 34011. Uh, that's 34011, which is a much longer shank to it. And that's what I'm looking for. I want a little bit longer body because then I can get some extra uh, wraps of rabbit around there to make it a little bit fuller. I will debarb the hook. and attach my thread right behind the eye. I'm using a white flat wax nylon for this. You can use a Wapsi uh, 210 denier UTC if you want, or <clears throat> even like a white Flymasters Plus, any, anything that's a heavier thread, simply because this is a large bulky fly and we're not that concerned about bulking things up with uh, the thread. So I'm going to have my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and that's where I'm going to tie in the bead chain eyes. I'm using gold bead chain for this and these are a medium. You could also use a large. An extra large might be a little bit too much. Uh, I'm going to tie these in and I'm using four of them across. I'm going to tie these in about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I just need enough room right up front here just to finish off the fly and uh, put in a little bit whip finish at the end. If you haven't seen the video that I did on the hammerhead uh, a long time ago, part of the reason for the four bead chains right up here is it's a wider profile. That's by the way where the name kind of comes from, from this fly hammerhead. It's a wider profile. These also will rattle and make a little bit of noise in the water, but it's also a fly that can be modified um, on the water. So if for some reason there's too much weight, there's too much action, there's too much noise or whatever, you can clip the outer beads off and just have the regular double bead chain on it. I'm going to get my thread just down the hook shanked about the point right here in some open spirals and here I'm going to add some lead wraps. Now the regular hammerhead has the extra large bead chain eyes on it. It's, it's all bigger profile, heavier fly. I use a .035 diameter lead on that. For this one, because this is for redfish, I don't want this dragging on the bottom. I'm looking for something that will sink a little bit slower, something that I can keep suspended in the water column, something that when I, I do a quick strip, it pulls it from down below up that will then kind of flutter and drift down a little bit and then jerk back up. So I'm just going to be using some point zero one zero lead wraps. I'm going to put about 15 in here. You can vary that up. It depends on your needs, but it's a, a heavier hook for one and you could probably even get away without any lead wraps because this hook is, is uh, so big. I'm going to shove all of these up towards the front here and then I'm going to cover these up with some thread wraps. Like I said, you could probably get by without any uh, lead on here if you wanted to. 
but I have found that um, just a little bit of light lead on there helps the jigging action on this and helps it to sink just a little bit quicker. Um, but again, I'm not trying to race this down to the bottom. I'm going to cover all of those up with some thread wraps and then advance my thread down to the end of the shank. Now is where I'm going to tie in the tail. Tail on the hammerheads are generally pretty simple. There's some silly legs in them, maybe a little different types of flash in them, and that's really about it. So for this one, I'm using some white silver flaked silly legs. <clears throat> I'm going to tie these on. I'm going to just bring these right up underneath the thread and tie them right up on top of the hook shank. And you'll notice that I'm advancing my thread forward just a few wraps, keeping all of this right up on top of the hook shank. Next, I'm going to tie in some, a couple of strands of, this is a glow-in-the-dark flashaboo. And I like it simply because it adds a little bit of color to it, not a whole lot of flash. Um, if it's charged, it might in murkier or darker waters present a little bit of light, but I just like the look of it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tie that right on top. I'm going to put a couple of wraps in here moving forward, leaving all of this just hanging out like that. And then I, for a little bit uh, flashier material, I'm going to throw in um, a couple strands of flash accent. Keep in mind, all of these also can be modified on the water. So if for some reason you think the fish are interested in the fly, but they come up to it and they just turn away, then maybe cut some of the rubber legs out or some of the flash or, or whatever you want. Now the reason why, as I was tying this in, I just was moving from the end of the shank up forward here and not folding all of this back is because I'm going to fold all of them back all at the same time. But the reason why I moved forward when I did that is now when I come back, my thread will be in a position so that when I fold these back, I can wrap those in. This is something a lot of people, um, beginning tires I've seen struggle with this. If they are right here, they want to fold these back and they want to start wrapping down. Well, notice I'm wrapping right on the very edge where those are folded and odds are my wrap's going to just like that pop in front. So it's not actually going to wrap down on it like that, which is what I'm looking for. Well, rather than mess with having to, you know, just wrap in front of the fold, what I'm going to do is move my thread down the hook shank like this to the back. And now when I fold this over, it just grabs all of it and it folds it right down. The reason that I'm one, it's a little more expedient in tying this fly. Just put in a couple wraps for the first material and move forward the second material, move forward and so on. And then when you fold it over, um, you're just doing it all at one, one time. The other is it mixes up, I think, a lot better doing it that way. I don't have stacked rubber legs, flash, and then flash. So one thing I want to do is I want to cut the tail here about the same length as the hook. But when I cut this, I'm going to stagger my cuts. I don't want them all to be chopped off right abrupt. I want this all to flutter in the, the water a little bit more. So with all of that tied in, we'll now start on the body of the redfish hammerhead. The first part of the body I'm using on this is just wool and this is just a, a white or kind of a cream colored wool. It, again, if you look at the video for the regular hammerhead that I did for carp, uh, some of this is explained in it, but the back section right here is almost all filler. Um, I'm just wanting to cover this up and just fill it in a little bit. So if you would rather use dubbing, use dubbing. If you would rather uh, use a chenille in here, go ahead by all means. I'm just using some wool. The back half is just this underbody material and the front half is going to be palmered rabbit zonker.
So at this point I'm just taking whatever I want to use for filler in the back and just wrapping that forward. If you don't want such a long body on this you could use a shorter shanked hook and still have the same space on the hook shank for the resulting rabbit body portion of it. Um, just shorten this this section right up here really is all you're doing. But I'm looking for a little bit longer body, body profile. So I anchor that wool in when I get halfway, cut that off. And now we're ready for tying in and palmering our rabbit zonker to make the body of our redfish hammerhead. So the tail portion of our redfish hammerhead has been completed as well as the back half of the body. The front half of the hammerhead is comprised of rabbit zonker. Generally, you can use a regular uh, 1 8 cut rabbit strip if you want. Um, I like the zonker strips, which are a little bit wider, or I'm sorry, not zonker, I meant to say magnum strips. These are all called zonkers. but. Um, I like the wider magnum uh, strips. There's just, just more hair in it, that's all. And that's, in this particular fly, it's what I'm looking for is more bulk around here that's gonna pulsate and, and move in the water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the fly over here and I'm going to tie this in, hair down like this. And I'm just gonna start wrapping this in making certain that as I'm wrapping this in, it just stays on the underside of the hook. This will flip over in the water because of the bead chain eyes and the extra weight, so it actually will swim hook point up like this. But you'll see when I finish this fly off, there's a reason why I attach this on the underside, um, and it has to do with how it's finished off when uh, we're done with the, the rabbit. The other thing you noticed, I probably bumped these a few times and these aren't in real tight and that's fine because when I finish putting wraps around the rabbit strip at the end, there will be more cross wraps around there and this will be all secured in very well. So now I'm going to start palmering this zonker strip around. You'll notice that the hairs pretty much stand straight out and that's what they're going to do in a zonker strip. This is not like a crosscut strip where they all lay, come off one side and they're all going in one direction. And these, the tendency is to come straight off of uh, the skin. When I wrap this around, I'm just partially overwrapping the previous wrap with that skin. And what that's going to do is it's going to tend to lay some of this down. And that's what I'm looking for. But by using a zonker strip like this, I've got hair that the tendency is to stand outward, so it tends to pulsate more as the fly is swimming through the water because the hair naturally wants to stand out like this. Depending on how long you want the hair body to be, you'll get four, maybe five wraps of the skin along the hook shank. When I come to this portion right here, I, are, I have the skin pretty much right up against this bead. So I'm, I'm pretty much done. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over now, and this is through uh, much research of tying this fly. I found that if you tie this on the underside, generally when you're done, this is where you're gonna end up it just looks a little bit cleaner. I'm actually gonna pull on that skin here a little bit and I'm gonna wiggle that skin so that it just comes in to the other side of this bead that's right up next to the hook like this. And see now I'm in a position where I can wet some of these fibers down and stroke them back but I can split the hair on the skin away and open up this section right in here for my thread to go over. And now I'm not trapping any hairs down in, in odd angles or anything or being wasteful. So see, now the thread just goes right over the very top 
of the skin right here and I'll get three wraps in here like that and then I'm going to cut the zonker off. Now when I do this what I want to do is I want to cut this at a bit of an angle because if I cut this straight off it's harder for me to grab enough to tie down to secure it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this at a point. I'm going to reach in with my scissors and cut this. Oh. Scissors aren't cooperating that well. Get my hand out of the way so you can see it. I'm going to cut that off at an angle. I'll show you. Here's a better view of it. See, I have this, this point of skin that sticks right up in between the two bead chain eyes. So now, when I start wrapping my thread on here, I actually come right across it and I grab that and I anchor it down in between those eyes. As well as when I'm coming and wrapping the other direction, and I'll show you here, like this, same thing. I'm actually wrapping over the sides of that tag of skin right between the dumbbell or the bead chain eyes and it's anchoring the zonker right up here as well as filling in this gap so now these eyes don't move so easy. I generally don't get too concerned if I have a stray hair poking out here or there because it's going to you know pulsate in the water but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to keep wrapping back and forth right in the middle there covering up the skin and everything else and just making it look a little bit neater and then by the time I have that done like that I've got everything covered up it all looks nice and neat I will just bring my thread forward all I'm looking to do is close up the gap on the uh, eye of the hook Put in four or five turn whip finish. And cut my thread off. With that done, that pretty much completes the hammerhead, the redfish hammerhead. I'm going to throw some fly tight all on those thread wraps and I'm really going to let that soak in there because I just want it's going to soak down into the thread and into that hide and it's really going to anchor that down. It, it actually is very very durable. So that's the redfish hammerhead. This one is in a barred white. I've done them in a barred tan, in a, uh, a barred crayfish color, and um, as well as a barred chartreuse and purple. Um, but this has produced very very well. So again, I, I encourage you to watch the original video on the hammerhead. You'll see this isn't that much different. It's a little bit different hook. Um, the, the real biggest difference is the eyes are a little bit smaller, as well as the lead wraps on the inside are a little bit um, uh, not, not as thick and not as heavy. And the reason for that is, again, I don't want this to sink to the bottom like the original hammerhead and look like a crawdad or a uh, goby or something like that on the bottom. I want this to swim in the water column a little bit more. And this is a work in progress. I'm still looking at different ways of getting this body to maybe be a little bit more uh, have a little bit bigger profile. We're just playing around with it a little bit. But this has worked very, very well for me. It's been a very productive fly. Redfish Hammerhead. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. 
Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. <laughs>